Hi, uh, welcome back. Uh, today I wanted to talk about gear acquisition syndrome, um, which is the name that seems to be given to the process that involves a delicate balance of my impulse control, stress, and behavioral reinforcement systems. That's uh, something you know, I, I know a bit about. Um, given my, my previous employment history. Um, today I thought I'd, I'd change the view slightly. I'm working with a, a tilt shift 24 mil lens. So the depth of field is quite narrow. So I may inadvertently move in and out of focus. I apologize for that. It's a manual focus lens, uh, but I wanted to try it and just to see how it works out. So gear acquisition sy syndrome. I don't know if that, I mean, the, the phrase is probably, um, familiar to you but I just wanted to to explore it because it, it does it does have a scientific background um, I'm not sure how it works for you but this is what happens with me yeah you know, I'll, I'll be looking at my pictures looking at my work wondering how to improve it and maybe I've just listened to a particularly inspiring podcast or or I've been digging through books by photographers I admire <clears throat> For instance, for example, last Monday, one of the podcasts um, that I listened to set a task for the week. And this time it was it was to intentionally let the shadows in the pictures fall to black, you know, so the highlights really don't get blown out. But you're left with these with these sort of big black blobs of, of almost almost mystery by you know, setting your exposure setting or the exposure setting. To, to get that effect um, now that appealed to me a lot as I like the work of Robert Adams and, and another guy called Austin Granger quite a lot both of whom seem to use this technique to create images uh, that, that, that will carry quite a lot of emotional heft they leave you sort of wondering uh, for me that that mystery of the shadows leaves me wondering what's there and as soon as I start to um, approach photographs with that in mind some of it is projection some of it is analysis but I begin to 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 fit to or I don't begin to I pay really close attention to what else is going on um, so in a way it's I guess it works by by just kind of sucking me in and at the moment that kind of suits me because that's what I'm looking for and I have a few images that, that might fit the bill but part of me goes oh no that's cheating it has to be a new image or it doesn't count that's what I think whether I'm right or not is a different matter but more of that later that's what I think so I have to find somewhere with some quite strong light as I currently only have one speed light and that really isn't going to cut the mustard given my limited knowledge it occurs to me that if i go somewhere that's quite dark already i'm going to be able to use the speed light to cast some really deep shadow and i will try that um, I'll, and i'll have a look back at the work i've done already and and go okay well you know and and see you see if there's anything there um but i've only got one speed light I've already put these rules, my own rules onto this. So I've gone outside the instruction I've been given. I do that a fair bit. Now, so I need strong light. The weather forecast isn't great. And I have to fit any shooting I do around the, the demands of my day job. And so I start to feel a little stressed. This is useful, for, this is usual for me. I start to feel a little bit stressed and that dampens my impulse control so I think okay well look if I you know and I have an idea I could buy a light on a stand or something like that you know so a really bright source of light you know if the sun's not there create create it Luckily, I recognise this as a daft idea, as I know I can't afford anything decent. And so I didn't rush into anything that I would have regretted almost as soon as I'd, I'd pulled the trigger on it. You know, whether it's clicking a button, phoning up a, a local shop, whatever. 
but I was almost unaware of the process until the initial excitement had tailed off and the, the adrenaline of the potential for new kit and and the fact that that would somehow make me a better photographer better able to fulfill the brief that I had I had a been given and then be then modified um that's a really powerful impulse to not necessarily resist but you know there was a mitigating fact there was a limiting fact what's what's the word i can't think of the i, I can't think of the word but there, there's a there's a factor factor that that mitigated that initial impulse and i'm, I'm quite grateful for that it was a safe almost a safeguarding thing so as I say, the adrenaline of the potential for that new kit and then the dopamine that followed the adrenaline and relieving the potential stress in a failing, failing in a creative endeavour, they were really powerful. And, you know, I couldn't help but notice that I'd modified the brief and somehow convinced myself that without the light, I would fail. I, that happened really quickly, as usual. But not going down that route forced me to actually chance my arm. Go out. The weather was clear, so I got the I got the shot. It's not a particularly great one, but I got the shot. The weather was clear and the sun eventually came out and was really bright in my little corner of the UK. And all it cost me was a coffee. The price of a coffee and a chocolate brownie. While I waited for the sun to get into the right position. And, and I waited. And, you know, today's another day where I can go out and do this. Um, so that's my thoughts on gear acquisition syndrome and how, you know, just one example of how it, 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 aff it affected me. That, that worry of not being able to um, not be good enough as a photographer not being able to fulfill the brief that stress that anxiety played into a couple of other bits that were going on and so you know I had to think quite carefully about what I was doing and I'm grateful that I was able to do so that as I say that happens to me quite a lot so I I was really grateful, uh, I'm really grateful to Neil James at the Photography Daily Podcast and I'm going to get this wrong, Joshua Sarinana for his article, he's a, a PhD guy he, he, um, who's also a photographer, for his article explaining the science behind this process. Um, I've included the links in the show notes, I think they apply to quite a lot of creative people that I know. And I think it might be well worth having a look at um, at the way that works and how it applies to to whoever. Um, in the meantime, thanks ever so much for 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 watching this, and um, I'll be back soon. I'm not sure what I'm going to do next, but I'll be back soon. Thank you. Bye bye.